Hello once again, this is Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle Skip bringing you more on my uh, 10 gigahertz experiments. So this is the next part after doing a solar noise test and actually EME reception test on my 21 and a half foot mesh dish I wanted to see what uh, I could do with this 6 foot solid dish I had laying in my uh, junk pile. In order to do anything with this six foot dish, uh, I had to build some kind of a support for a stand. Uh, I had this old one laying around that I used with an offset feed dish experiment I did a while back, so it was a good thing to start with uh, just to save money, if anything, just as, like I said, it's an experiment. I also needed a main mast, and again, uh, using what I had in my uh, scrap pile, I had this nice piece of pipe which uh, was a bit too long so I had to trim the ends square and uh, make it to make it to the right length. The best part about this piece of pipe I laid around was that it uh, was a perfect fit for this truck bearing I was going to use for the uh, main bearing in the azimuth drive. I uh, made a welded up a sport for it or a bracket on an aluminum plate and bolted it to the top of the frame. What I was going to use for the azimuth motor was the old 501 worm drive that was that used to be on my 21 foot dish uh, that I took off when I upgraded it to the slew drive. So I needed to build an adapter to go from the inside of that mass pipe down to the uh, coupling of the uh, uh, motor itself. So in this picture you can see where I've uh, welded some angle iron onto the existing stand to hold the motor in place. And uh, you can just see the aluminum adapter that goes from the motor up to the inside of the pipe that's being used as the uh, azimuth mast. With the azimuth drive and bearing arrangement figured out, uh, next was to get the elevation system working and some way of getting the dish mounted to the azimuth pole itself. So to stay on the cheap side of this experiment, I, I didn't have any steel angle iron, but I had lots of scrap aluminum laying around, so I decided to use it to build up the dish mount and elevation hinge part of it. Then the fun started, uh, getting the dish up onto the bracket. I was a simple pulley and a rope. I was able to get it pulled up there with the help of my good wife, and uh, finally got it bolted into the metal framework of the elevation part of it. This picture here, you can see a little better of the... Uh, axis for the elevation uh, lift part of it. It's uh, a couple of pillow block bearings mounted on top of a square frame I made out of some uh, two inch angle iron. The uh, elevation axis arms are actually made of two pieces of channel I cut off of an old um, equipment rack. So on the cheap again, use what you got. Next to build up was the elevation actuator mount. I had some uh, nice square tubing to build up a bracket that would bolt to the top of the assembly and then on on the mast. Again, in my collection of goodies, I had a couple of old um, actuators from TV, TVRO dishes, and these make perfect uh, elevation lifts, of course. Four small dishes, that is. I thought I was going to have to put some counter weights on this thing, because believe it or not, this six-foot dish is heavy. I found though for this experiment the uh, actuator had lots of power and it could tip the dish up and down so we'll worry about counterweights later if I decide to use this dish permanently. So with the azimuth and elevation system built and working, uh, next was to build up some kind of a mounting system for the feed. The system I had built for the 21 foot dish worked so well I just decided to build the same thing only on a smaller scale. So of course there was more metal work to be done. Uh, here I'm milling out these little brackets that the feed arms will hook to. These four brackets were welded to a aluminum square frame I made. The inside hole is four inches square. Then this uh, square frame was welded to a tray, which is what the uh, feed assembly will slide into. Like I said, it's very similar to my big dish feed mount, only on a smaller scale. I'm hoping it's not too big, but uh, that's why it's an experiment. Time will tell. Next, I had to build up the uh, ends that go into the feed arms themselves to hook to the brackets and onto the dish. So 
Here's some little videos of that production. Then the piece was taken over to the mill and the ends were machined down for a flat bracket which will be where the bolt goes through. There was eight of these end piece brackets to be built, so it, it took a couple of afternoons and uh, it all worked out quite well. I know it seems like quite a bit of work for an experiment, but uh, that's the fun part of it all. So this is what I wound up with eight of these specialized brackets, uh, four are short ones that will be welded permanently to a pipe, the aluminum pipe that's going to be the arms. The uh, longer shaft ones are for adjustable length to move them in and out to uh, center the feed horn to the dish, etc. etc. The angle iron pieces on top are what, uh, can, uh, what bolts to the dish surface itself for the arms to bolt to, as you'll see. So here's a picture of the feed tray bolted to the arms to give you an idea how that hooks up everything's kind of just temporarily bolted here to make things fit for the moment you can see the uh, special laid up brackets for the aluminum pipe themselves are are welded on the ends here they're they're fixed this is at the other end of the feed arm itself you can see the hose clamp I have on the pipe there this is the end that's adjustable for uh, getting things centered and it's bolted to that special piece of angle iron that's bolted to the uh, dish surface. Getting the whole apparatus to stay together while the clamps and the bolts were loose was quite a trick. I threw a rope on it, threw it over the top of the dish and tied it on there and it would hold things in place while I slowly assembled each arm bit by bit, piece by piece. This picture you see where I've got the little 10 gig feed just clamped temporarily to the side of the uh, mounting tray and then uh, measure the tape measure to uh, get the focal point just in, in just in front of it and by doing this I had to cut the arms back a little bit uh, one inch at a time and to get everything just you know set just right so that part of the feed mount is finished uh, gonna show you a little video here of how it all works So I'm using a couple of small power supplies, uh, one for the elevation and one for the azimuth motors to uh, move this thing around. This is normal speed, of course, and the motors are running at full tilt, so I mean, they'll be, they'll be controlled and slowed down when, when in use for the test. Here's hoping the uh, feed mount tray isn't going to create too much blockage for the signal getting to the dish itself, but uh, we'll find out.
And that's where the video ends for this part. So now I have to take the this 10 gig receive uh, setup I have here and downsize it, shrink it so it'll fit into the uh, four inch feed tray of the uh, 10 gig dish assembly here. This was the one I used on the 21 foot and it uh, won't quite fit. So when that's all done, uh, then I gotta take it all apart move it outside, get it all reassembled, and then start doing the solar noise testing again. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a job in itself. So that wraps up this part of uh, the 10 gig experiment. Stay tuned, uh, there'll be more coming. Same for now from Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle. Thanks for looking.